Employees are soulless zombies walking around in organizations and we made them to be like that. We can't blame anybody else. If you are an employee, a manager, leader, or in HR, stay with me. This video is for you because I am bringing you your employee's voice. You remember, this is all I do. I'm an organizational psychologist and I'm interested in employees' experiences so I can fix the HR function, I can fix organizations. And this is the most beautiful job and I sometimes fail to understand why that's not the focus or why HR professionals don't find joy in it. Now let's dive in because that's a fantastic, fantastic topic. So I made a video on TikTok last week or this week and it went a little crazy with lots of good comments. I'm going to put the link below in the comment field so you can have a look, but I also bring some of them here and we're going to discuss that. Um, it is extremely important for us to understand what employees are feeling, experiencing and why they behave in a way they behave because otherwise there is no way we can do or implement anything that will have that. This is, if you don't listen to employees, we are wasting companies' money, organizations' money. If we don't listen to employees, we can't do our jobs as leaders, managers, and HR. If we don't listen to employees, we are not going further with anything that we do because then it's just most of the time what I see, especially from HR and leaders and managers from all of them. Let's sit down and decide what is good for employees. Well, maybe they sh you should guys listen to them first because what they tell you, this is where you need to start doing your, this is where, what gives you the base of your job. This week I had a meeting, a coaching session with the leader and she was, she's doing something, protecting her employees. And I said, do you actually know if they need that type of protection? It's a very specific case. I don't want to give details. And, and she says, no, I'm like, maybe you should be start asking first of all of your employees. But let's go to zombies, because that was one of the, co the, co the comment that I received. I'm like, oh, my God, that is so true. We made them. So who are these zombies? Let's clarify with that. And I made all these comments for you guys. Employees, zombies are those disengaged workers who show up and go through the motions doing just enough to keep their jobs but lacking passion, motivation and drive. They are physically present but mentally checked out, sleepwalking through their work days without actively contributing or going the extra mile. Because the extra mile, and this, so this is where it finishes, I took that out from the internet because that's, that's exactly what it is. And here I want to say the extra mile is ideas and opinions on how we could do better, not extra hours or double workload. And this is what we lost. This is what we got rid of and we have removed this from employees. Because I have never seen an employee who didn't want to do a good job. I never seen an employee who didn't want to contribute, who didn't want to show off their skills when they joined organizations. But slowly, we took these away and they have become unemployable employees. And that was the title of my video, What Makes You Unemployable? And these are the things that I listed. So you are in, you know, you understand what comes under that. Because after this, I'm going to tell you, talk about the comments. So the first one that makes you unemployable, you, are, you understand too much of the corporate system for your own job security. You see through it. If you are a critical thinker, because you will ask questions and challenge ideas. Corporations don't like that. When you hate buzzwords and you just want clear communication. You are unemployable when you cannot fake enthusiasm. When you dislike forced fun, you know, the team building activities and all the games that we need to play. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I even choke on that because that's my favorite. You are unemployable when you spot hypocrisy instantly. Organizations are full of hypocrisy. Um, when you value efficiency. Now, this one is a massive one because you will see in the comments. If you don't want to play politics, you know, the Game of Thrones of the Office Edition. When you want accountability at every level, 
then you won't settle for exposure as a reward. You know what I mean. When you, when you understand that there is a limit to do more with less. Yeah, we can do more with less, but up to a certain point. When you don't want to play the yoga and meditation game to address dysfunctional workplace issues. When you believe that the job description should match the actual job. When you are entrepreneurial, taking risks, changing things and seeing opportunities, hell definitely no, that's not what organizations want. So I listed all this. Oh, then there is one more, the last one. If you don't buy into the burn the bridges, don't burn the bridges narrative, because you know that only those believe in this who cannot swim on their own. Because yeah. they want you to rely on them. And there are people who rely on them and there is nothing wrong with it. Now here I'm not against organizations. I'm, I'm, not, against, uh, I'm not against or for anybody, employees and employers, because both can go really wrong. But here are the comments that I found really useful. Now there are the very pissed off employees who are just upset. And that's also a good feedback because we push people to that length. And it's not only the employer. I'm not saying that. My, uh, what I'm saying is that you as an employer, your job is to look at the, what, what my employees are experiencing and why. And can I fix it? If I can't, at least can I can't talk to them? And I will give you specific examples. So the first comment, it's all just a game. Play the game. Tell them what they want to hear. So this is where the zombie comes into the picture. They used to give us ideas. They, we used to, you know, go there with, with challenging the norm, you know, giving ideas, how we can do better, how we can save money, and everything has been rejected. We worked really hard to show that, yes, I'm up for a promotion because I can do the job, but somebody's friend got that promotion. So now they are not even arguing over that, and that's the worst. I always said I'd rather have an, a, a workforce that is constantly complaining or telling me something than a silent workforce, because then there I lost the game. There is nothing I can do. If people stop talking to you, it's because you stopped listening. And that's the worst. So I'd rather have a very loud and noisy workforce because that means they want change. They want to stay with me, but they are just, you know, voicing things that maybe we could do better. And it's not necessary that you are a bad manager. Don't take it personally. So second comment, this great, and then I replied to this comment that this game has a massive impact on mental health. Now that cascaded into a long trail of everybody's chipping in. And she says it does, but only if you take it personally. I remember a guy smiling through the worst of corporate politics. I asked him, how did he do it? So he said, just thought about his salary, band, uh, salary and didn't really care. I admired how he could do it. So what we achieved is zombies who don't care. Is this what we wanted? Is this what we want when we ask for conformity? When we talk about the value and the cultural narrative, don't say anything. Bring your ideas, but the moment you bring your ideas, yeah, it's no. And then the moment you start be critical thinker and strategic thinker, which means that you want to start questioning the status quo and everything, now you are a troublemaker and now you are just very negative or critical and you criticize everybody. No, I'm just asking questions. Is that okay? Um, so yeah, the person doesn't care. Now, the next comment, you are absolutely right. I was laid off because I am not a cultural fit for com two companies. All I do now is clock in, do the job, barely hello, say hello to anyone and clock out. I am a complete numb robot. People will be wrong. The way they argue, the way they bring things to the, to the table, the way they raise issues. Because guess what? Communication is a highly sophisticated skill and none of us are very good at, especially when we start the corporate world, right? So what we need to do is not shut people down and up, <laughs> but teach them that, hey, it's fantastic, but maybe that's not how we present it. 
and constantly teaching. I wish I was taught how to present my argument because I had bloody good ideas, but I never been really, I never learned, I never been taught that how to do it better. I was always taught, Sylvia, you are very argumentative, you are very straightforward, you are very, I don't know what to do with this bloody feedback because now I need to go and figure it out. And guess what? When you are busy, when you are occupied, especially when you are taught constantly that you are wrong, with your approach and you are not a team player and you are not this or not that, guess what? That's the motivation. Even if I wanted to figure it out, no, I'm not doing it. Because now, it's not that you hurt my ego, now you literally shut me down. And now you made a robot out of me who just numb, who is just numb and you know what? I don't care. Next comment, yeah, they say, think outside the box, but I'm wondering, why am I in the box in the first place? <laughs> wow. I told them I could improve, improve efficiency and save them a ton of money. Management thought I was being insubordinate. Once again, maybe it's a communication problem because we just don't know how to present it. Can we please start teaching people how to present the argument and also how to receive feedback? Because we always teach people how to give feedback, but we never teach people, especially leaders and men, how to receive them. Because part of receiving, it will be that 90% of this feedback will be really badly presented to you, but your job is really... Ignore all that and say, okay, what are they trying to say? Yes, they are. They hate me right now. Okay, that's good. Maybe they don't. They just don't know how to present it. So we need to teach everybody how to give feedback, how to present it, um, and how to receive it, right? Because most of the time, the problem is with the receiving, not with the giving. Because <laughs> even if it's badly given, if you can receive it really well, you know, you will get somewhere. Next one, this is, uh, um, I, it's mentally exhausting. I just want to do a go, good job and go home. I am not in the school play, playground. A lot of people just want to do a good job and don't want to be involved with anything, especially corporate politics. And that is exhausting. And this is what the next one is saying. It's mentally exhausting. I just want to do once again, a good job and not getting involved with anything else. The next one, why I feel depressed at work? It's a dirty game. Why did we make a playground outside, uh, out of organizations? People just want to do a job and go home. What is wrong with it? Why did we overcomplicate it and make everybody's life a misery? This is why so many people with autism are unemployed. The irony is that they could improve the system and give, uh, give them the opportunity. There was a lot of comments about autism Asperger syndrome, which is, you know, um, and neurodivergent people in general, that they are struggling because that's exactly what I listed. It's, it's, it's them, authenticity, right? Not playing around straight. It's the Kumbaya forced team event, events that kill me. Me too. I, I'm out, like straight up. Don't play game, I dance around, leave me alone. It's easier to fake an orgasm than to fake work enthusiasm from a manager that is a known, observed, factual, pathological liar. Faking enthusiasm. Ignore the rest, but <laughs> that's, that's true. People, you see from the tone of voice, people are angry. They are fed up. We've been doing this to them for so long and now this is how they present it. Why? Because we didn't listen to them in the first three times that they were telling us. So now this is how it com comes out. And you do exactly the same. Don't start blaming the employees because you did the same with your friends, with your family, with your wife, with your husband. Bloody hell, I asked you 10 times to take the rubbish down. Now you don't. Now you see what's going to get. You're going <laughs> to You didn't listen the first time. So it's a normal human response that, and it's just... Converse, if you are a good feedback receiver, you understand, okay, there is a frustration here. Maybe it's been going on too long. Why? Did I not listen? Did I not see? Did I miss something? Because nobody at first time responds like that. Nobody. Um, don't work. And here I'm not going to make uh, list names of companies, but there was a lot of companies mentioned don't work here. So careful with your reputation companies. 
Today, everything is exposed. The issue with having all of these is that you have left, you have left to learn to not show your, your uh, true emotions and feelings. So they put masks on people and we want them to be um, um, and, uh, authentic. And also at the same time, so we shut you up, we mask you, we plaster you, this is how you should be, not ignoring the impact of their mental health and then we send them into mental health workshops. Yeah. Um, even if you are a good employee, toxic mismanagement management will blame you and ask you to leave the job. I have discovered that all companies follow Peter's principle. Think about that and compare it with your company. 100%. We promote to incompetence, right? And there's other element to it. They get offended that you can see through the bullshit. Through that. I have seen that many times that I said, I'm like, this is what it is. And they are upset. And you know what? As a consultant, I see that sometimes with organizations, many times, especially with leaders, when you lay down the, the problems, okay, these are the, they take it as, they get upset. I'm like, this is your company. I'm just telling you what I found. Why are you upset with me? Because they never, receive, you know, they can't face that it comes from mismanagement. But move past that, because if you're stuck on that, you never come out of it. Your feelings and emotions doesn't matter. Your employees, these thousands of employees, that matters. And that's the point of the whole exercise, right? Because if you are so occupied with how it makes you feel that your entire workforce is just not happy, then it's all about you. You made it about you, and it's not about you. Nobody cares about you. What we care is, can we create an environment where we don't have these kind of experiences? I tried over seven, seven different jobs, went at it on my own over three years ago. Streets are rough, but I would die first before going back. Rather put that effort back on my hustle. Employment is slavery. I disagree with slavery, but... Um, Yes, absolutely. So lots of people going on their own, not because they don't want to work. It's because of what I'm explaining, this inauthentic workplace, this, you know, games that we are being, it's like an obstacle course. I'm like, when does it end? Am I tested enough now? Like how many more times? This is me through and through. No wonder corporate has been a roller coaster. There has, be, has to be another way. It's just too hard for me. It never works. Too much bullshit. Are employees asking too much? It's a game and I don't want to play it. All they ask is, I don't want to play this game. Can we just do the job? <laughs> you know, sometimes the solution is doing nothing and doing less. And HR and leaders are going, trying to do all sorts of strategy and investment and all that, 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 that. Like, stop doing what you are doing and that will fix the problem. Didn't even need to finish watching the video. I understand that is me. Even as a senior director can no further stomach the, co the corporate life. So last year at the age of 58 and 38 years, 38 years of working, I have retired. What a gift. Good for you. Have some rest. Well, in software development, we are still good. So there are good examples too. Depends on the company, but you won't get promoted. And it's okay if you don't, if you want to work on things rather than manage your status and get the promotion. So there are good industries, right? Fake management loves fake employees. Why? And they work terribly. Yeah. Here is, I'm looking for work. Here I am looking for work, but fired many times for what you have said. Agreed. Had a couple of arguments with my boss today. I was right, but I was still wrong. You can't win. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You are right, sir. They sometimes expect to have these values they have, but they want you to act the other way. Yeah. I managed 10 years working for corporations. The best thing I ever did was work for myself, make my own decisions. Even if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. You just have to get back dust yourself down and get back on it, on it, uh, on with it. 100%. We all make mistakes. 
But in corporations, sometimes it's like, oh my God, the world has collapsed. Nothing will happen. Okay? Nothing. And all of us are making mistakes. Politics are my weaknesses. I think everybody is. Um, I hate playing it, but have learned how to do it for the sake of gaining corporate promotion and pay. Can you imagine how much energy employees are wasting on playing the games rather than doing the job? Rather than creating something for the company, rather than making the company more profitable, rather than doing anything else. Imagine if we invested all the energy into bettering the company. Um, I can't play the game and I refuse to play the game. There is more to life than, than this. I play the money game. Learn to say no, do my time and move on when expected. I do my job well, quick and pass through the shadows and cracks. Once again, low key, give me the money. So there is no discretionary effort, which is ideas, opinions, challenging the status quo, because these are discretionary um, efforts. And we got rid of all of that and we won this through our engagement activities. Now, how does it bloody make sense to all of you in corporations? Nobody will, unless you understand discretionary effort, is unpaid overtime, um, 12 hours shift every day, not taking a, a, a day off and, you know, working throughout the weekend. That's not. Discretionary effort is contributing with ideas and making things better. Because I have never seen, and bringing innovation, right? Because I have never seen a job description that said you need to contribute with ideas. So that's a discretionary effort if I add it to it. Make it our own game, and this is the last one. Make it our own game, change it from the inside out. Build, boomers built it, and we can dismantle and rebuild the way it needs to be done now. And I love this comment for the last, because why don't we make it our game? Why don't we change it? This system was built by literally the boomers, and I have talked about it before. There's nothing wrong with it. It worked until 10, 15 years ago. Now it's completely collapsed and we just don't want to, you know, uh, face the fact. Let's dismantle it and rebuild it the way it needs to be done. And let's rebuild it in a way that is agile and flexible because the generations are changing. People are different. Industries are different. So HR's job is really to build organizations that listen to employees. Last week I was, or this week I was on, uh, we were presenting an employee experience data dashboard to one of the clients. And the client says, because when you want to fix your organization, you need to look, look into exactly these kind of experiences. And this is what we, we do. And, and so we were presenting this dashboard and the details, what this platform is giving and our work is given to the, the companies. And then the HR person and the CEO said, I have never seen data like that. Exactly. Because you don't look around. You are close to ideas. You get offended because you receive the bad feedback and you go, no, I know what is good for my employees. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. Because if this is your approach, all you want to have is what we created, zombies walking through organizations, no soul, no effort. Let me put my head down, do the job. I don't want to get into trouble. I'm clocking, clock out, and that's it. If we want more out of people, maybe we need to start listening to them. I will put the link below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and spread this message so we can create better work environments for everybody. I hope this helped.